Hello, my name is Neil Tickton. I'm the editor-in-chief and publisher of MacTech Magazine, and these are the MacTech TUAW developer interviews, uh, where we're talking to developers about what's going on with uh, Apple's uh, new OSs that are coming our way this year, how it impacts them, and how it ultimately impacts you as well. Sitting with us now is Michael Zalatel. He's the founder of i4 Software. Thanks for coming, Michael. All right, thanks. So, um, you know, we've been starting to hear a little bit more from Apple about OS X Mavericks and iOS 7 and kind of what's coming our way as the course of this year uh, goes on. And we're going to hear more and more details, obviously, over, over time. But from what you've heard so far or seen so far, what are you excited about? What are the things, that, what's your favorite features of these new OS, OS, new OS is either one of them or both of them, either way? All right, well, uh, uh, I'm obviously excited about the Mac Pro. Okay. I've been waiting a long time for a new Mac Pro. Yeah. And uh, in particular, the uh, Apple announced support for 4K displays right. with the Mac Pro. And in, in addition to that, they announced that the uh, Apple TV could uh, uh, could operate as a separate Display, window. Yeah. Separate window. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm hoping for I don't have any information, but I'm hoping for a, a 4K display from Apple or a right. 4K Apple TV that would uh, Interoperate with this new Mac Pro, right. OS 10 yeah. Mavericks, yeah. Um, drive in three 4K Apple TVs <laughs> on my desktop, yeah. maybe 42 inch, yeah. maybe 60 inch. I'm sitting back a little bit further, and I've got, uh, I don't know, what is it, 18 million, 20 billion pixels or something yeah, exactly. to work with? Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about iOS 7. Yep. I think that. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of innovation, yep. uh, both from the platform side, the developer side, yep. and also for the consumer. I think it's going to make for a better experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what i4 Software does? Okay, well, i4 Software, uh, we've got about 25 apps in the App Store. Uh, our most famous app is Flashlight. Yep. We, uh, it's the number one best-selling utility of all time. Mm -hmm. A million and a half copies sold. Mm -hmm. 99 cents okay and it was a top it was number one utility for I think a year and a half or mm -hmm. something like that it's still in the top I think 20 25 utilities and uh, that enabled us that cash flow enabled us to basically build other things the app business yeah, yeah. and so we uh, we announced video camera which won best of show at Macworld 2012 mm -hmm. uh, it's now called VisiWig. we changed the name to VisiWig, and it's in it's in its third version it's a Extremely robust app. It uh, it's a full video editing and capture app. It uh, also allows for simultaneous uh, simultaneous recording and live switching from up to sixteen iOS devices. So, okay. so over Wi-Fi, you've got you know five, six, eight, ten cameras, and you've got one main master, and you're recording from all these, and it's creating a multi clip. And they just all come into the yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So that's really cool. And um, then we also and that sells for nineteen ninety nine. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting, an interesting experiment for us. There aren't really many apps in the App Store that sell for that 19, price point. 19, yeah. And uh, that app sells well. We, we sell probably 40, 50 copies a day and, and growing. Um, it's got you know, four and a half stars on over 2,000 reviews. So that's, you know, it's a different experience for us. There's yeah. a lot of developers several years back that thought it was gonna be a 99 cent market. Yeah. And, you'd never, and then a lot of them just went for free. They're like, well, I even try, you know. Right. I'll just right. go free. Right. And uh, we took the opposite approach. Uh, we launched the app at about, I think, $9.99 or something like that. And, uh, but as we continued to invest in it and make it better and right. add more and more features, we felt that it was worth more. We raised the price to $19.99, and we've built a really good customer base. Did you see a lot of drop-off in, in price? In, uh, uh, we saw drop-off in sales, but we actually increased revenues. Right. So you know, we, we would rather service those customers that we have. Right. Um, and ultimately, that was a, a positive decision for us. We also have an app called Fast Camera. Um, it's been in the top 20 photo apps for quite some time. We have about 6 million users. It sells for $1.99, and it's considered the Swiss Army knife of iPhone photo apps. Uh, and so that's done really well for us. And we've got a you know, bunch of other apps. We've got children's apps. Uh, like We've got a children's book called The Purple wow. Frog. And, so got a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, we got we got we got a lot of different apps, and so that helped us to build the business. So you know, obviously, uh, as we're as as people have been seeing more and more about uh, uh, iOS seven in, in particular, um, you know, there's the flashlight that's now right as part of the OS on it, and it's like, you know, the first thing we, we thought was to about all of the flashlight developers out there on it. So what did you think when you were seeing that? Well, obviously, I'm 
the flashlight developer that has made the most money. Yeah. Uh, our flashlight's been the most successful. Yeah. Uh, again, we sold a million and a half copies. Right. Most flashlights are free. Yeah. And they're ad supported. Yeah. Um, so you know the positive side of it is we've been competing in a market against literally thousands of free flashlights right. for three years yeah. or whatever, right. and people continue to buy our paid flashlight. Um, there's three key reasons they buy our paid flashlight. One is it doesn't have ads blaring in your face. Um, it turns on immediately, it's instant on, and more importantly, it's got a dimmer switch, so you can dial down the LED brightness. Right. Um, uh, so you know when we heard yesterday, uh, or sorry about that. Um, uh, when, you, when you heard what yeah, Apple was when, doing when with that, so, yeah. yeah. So let me let me let me just back up yeah. in a second. So um, obviously, when we when we were aware that uh, iOS seven right. may be bringing a, right. a flashlight right. app to the to the control panel, right. uh, we were obviously concerned. I mean, yeah. that's been our bread and butter for a yeah. long time. It's helped us build this business. So. Um, and other developers have fallen in the crosshairs of, of new features that get added that maybe make their app yep. uh, less relevant. Yep. In our particular case, though, once we once we were able to take a look at it, mm -hmm. um, we feel confident that that our it's app, another free flashlight. Th yeah. That it's another free flashlight. It's it's first of all, it's hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of our customers are uh, people that are hard of eyesight right. and have a difficult time. One of the reasons they like ours, you get this big red, huge red button yep. that obviously um, easy to see. Yeah, that that you know uh, isn't isn't thin, narrow, and and flat. Right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's big and yeah. easy to see. It makes it easy to dim the light or turn the light off, turn the light back on. And uh, more importantly, uh, the, the most important thing is that when you use the control panel flashlight on iOS seven, it's a it's a flick up and then tap. So right. it's two steps. But more importantly, they turn the whole screen white. Right. So, you know, um, although I'm not an optometrist, when you have white light shining right. in your face in the dark, right. your pupils dilate. Very quickly. And you can't, you can see even less than you could before. Right. right. Um, so the key with our app is we take the screen almost completely black right. when, you, when you launch it. And you're working out of the, out of the LED. Yes, yeah, so the right. LED is shining off the back of the phone, but the right. LCD in, in your face Ours, it's completely black, right. um, and so you can actually see things, and you can see the red switch to turn it on and off. Right. Our concern about, um, uh, not our concern, but the thing that makes us happy is that people are going to try this other one in the dark, and the white light's going to be shining in their face, and they're going to be able to see, right. and they're going to say, ah, I'm going to pay a buck for the, for, for the, the good one, one, you right, know, for right. the one that does exactly what I want. And it's also just one tap. Right. So icon on your home screen, tap it, lights on, right. screen's off, then you're ready to rock. Otherwise, you're yeah. flipping up, waiting a little bit for the control panel to load, tapping the button, and you know. So we just got a couple more seconds yeah, here, but uh, um, is there anything you, you've been hearing from out of Apple on the iOS side or on the Maverick side that you just like you're just eager to implement in one of your pieces oh, of software somewhere? Or absolutely. Is it just so many things. Yeah. That well, absolutely. In our VisiWig video yeah. editing and capture software, and our video filters software, um, we're excited about 60 frames per second yeah. video recording. Yeah. So. Um, not that people are going to record in 60 frames per second, but that gives true slow motion. Yeah. So you know you shoot in 60 frames per second, right. but then you output at 24 frames per second. Now yeah, you've got really almost nice two and a half yeah. uh, slow motion. You've got a lot more frames to do uh, interpolation slow motion between. Right. And so we're looking forward to some really smooth slow mo. Slow mo. Yeah. Uh, that'll be cool. Cool. And uh, also there's to be some improvements in control over focus and exposure, right. maybe even. Although we've got manual controls in all of our apps, right. you, know, you triple tap the screen, uh, we, we're we limited by what Apple provides. Very so nice. there's some new things that, that give gives you a us more granular control yeah. over the camera sensor, maybe even over the shutter, we're right. not sure yet, yeah. maybe even over the f-stop. I mean, things like that could be Huge. really exciting yeah, for, for camera apps, of course. Well, Michael, thank you for joining us here and giving us some uh, insight into what so many things that iFor Software does. And it's great to you know, hear that a flashlight vendor is, is uh, optimistic here about the about the future and what that means and uh, really good to hear that uh, over time. Uh, I'm Neil Tickton. These are the TUAW Mac Tech interviews with developers talking about the impacts of uh, Apple's release of information slowly here about uh, OS 10 and also iOS 7. Thanks for listening.